Hi, welcome back to another edition of IndyCar with me, Gordon Ross. It's the 21st of July. Now, in the news today, you've probably been listening to the BBC and other news media talking about the uh, the, the final publication of this uh, well-trailed uh, report into supposed Russian interference in, in British democratic processes. Not... Um, what was I going to say, not limited, in fact, to, to just democratic processes. There are uh, all manner of accusations being levelled at the Russians from their involvement in the uh, most recent referendum on, uh, on leaving the European Union to also the election, uh, the last general election that we held in the United Kingdom, and going all the way back to 2014 and the results of the Scottish independence referendum. All of this is contained inside this government report, the one which Boris Johnson had suppressed while he was running for office because presumably um, the whole idea that Brexit might have been influenced by Russia was going to cast him in a bad light. Anyway, what has come out of this today, uh, apart from the fact that they're claiming Russian involvement in all manner of things, is the fact that the British government did nothing about it, did nothing to protect the United Kingdom from this kind of so we say cyber warfare or guerrilla warfare online. Now it's well known that the Russian state is happy f to sow dissent among Western governments. In fact, they do have a programme uh, which is aimed at, so we say, creating um, confusion amongst people in West by basically publishing memes and other things which are untrue or confusing. Now that uh, is not in question, but what is in question is something which I think is important to remember today when you are listening to what was in this report, the allegations that it is making are not all factually based on intelligence. Now, intelligence, as we understand it, would be spies, um, GCHQ intercepting messages, um, checking out suspicious-looking uh, tweets and things like that, and tracking them down uh, via all sorts of elaborate electronic means to some kind of um, Russian sweatshop somewhere where people are, are hammering out these memes. Now, you might think that, but that's actually not what is contained in this report. Because what's contained in the report is a mixture of intelligence gathered from these kinds of sources, in other words, directly from the spy network, uh, from people on the ground in, these, in, in countries like Russia, and through GCHQ. But it's not entirely that. And they mention a thing called the open source or credible open source intelligence. Now, credible open source intelligence is according to Craig Murray, who knows such things because Craig was a British ambassador for many years. He was um, privy to the most secret of secret things in the United, uh, in the United Kingdom's um, foreign office. And so he knows what the protocols are. He also knows what the jargon means. And Craig explains in a very short article today what this phrase credible open source intelligence means. And what it means is anything, an article, a paper, a scientific report published either in the press, in the mainstream media, or as a scientific paper or as an academic paper in a university or college. Now, when you think about that, that's not really intelligence. And in fact, much of the intelligence that is gathered this way is wrong. And I think a prime example of that, quoted by Mr. Craig today, uh, by Mr. Murray today, by, pardon, by Craig Murray, is the famous uh, weapons of mass destruction dossier, which um, Tony Blair presented to Parliament as intelligence, knowing full well that most of the, um, the contents, the claims about weapons of mass destruction were based on a student thesis, nothing to do at all with British intelligence. It was cooked up to justify war. Now, that notwithstanding, I'm not claiming that that's happened here, but what is happening here is we are being led to believe that the intelligence report contains intelligence. Now, intelligence is usually information gathered by the Secret Service, which is what they are there to do. But to, to use, say, an article in a newspaper as the basis for claiming that Russia has interfered in some way in some kind of election or referendum is a totally different thing. But the British press is using this as a way to beat Scotland. Uh, they're using it as a way to discredit the Scottish uh, in 
Scottish independence movement as well by claiming that uh, the result, in other words, the, the actual vote level achieved by the people in the Scottish independence movement in 2014 was done with the help of some kind of Russian assistance. And they base all of this kind of um, so-called intelligence on one or two pro-unionist Russophobe reporters in newspapers such as uh, not specifically, but such as the Glasgow Herald or the, or the Sun newspaper or one of these big um, British publications which badges itself as Scottish. Now they are full of people who are quite happy uh, to publish anything which makes Russia look bad. Now I'm not saying Russia is innocent in all of this, but to claim that somehow Russia had some kind of hand in how things went in the Scottish election is really just to discredit the Russian observers who were at that uh, referendum who reported on irregularities across the voting system during the Scottish referendum. And this was rubbished by the British government, saying that this was plainly disinformation uh, designed to confuse the electorate. But in actual fact, the Russians may well have seen uh, irregularities observing the, the ballot as they did. So when we are listening to the press today going on about what bad people uh, the Russian military are or the Russian Secret Service are for confusing the poor British and American people and the Europeans, then just remember that some of the so-called facts and intelligence that are being presented to us as evidence of this are actually just simply coming from journalists, nothing to do with the Secret Services at all. They are just opinions based on rumours or hearsay from individuals or articles that they've read in the university library about things which may or may not be true. And this is being presented to the public as some kind of fact, you know, that we can rely on this because it's coming from the secret services. The intelligence community has gathered this information by reading a newspaper or reading somebody's um, somebody's thesis in a university library. Now, these are not intelligence gathering uh, norms, shall we say. This is information, this is background, it's hearsay, it's not evidence of anything in particular. Uh, so they were getting all bent out of shape about what Russia is doing to Great Britain. The fact is that Great Britain is quite capable of completely cocking up its own democracy. It doesn't need any Russian help to be um, as inept as it is. It manages that quite well unassisted. So I would just say to you, and I would warn you in the same way that Craig Murray has in his article, to add a gigantic, uh, not a pinch of salt, but a, a bucket full of salt to the information that is being presented today in this dossier. Now, it might well be that the British government has failed to protect its, um, its democratic infrastructure from Russian interference, but you can't base that on a newspaper article in the Glasgow Herald or in the uh, in the Scotsman or something like that, written by somebody who has a chip on his shoulder about Russia for some reason. The Russians, um, despite the fact that they struggle at the moment uh, to make a, a sort of statement on the world stage, because they're not as big as the United States anymore. They're no longer the Soviet Union. They're still very powerful, but Russia has approximately 10% of the spending power for its defence programmes that the Americans have. And they're feeling it now, and they're feeling a bit desperate. And so they've taken to, some would say, taken to the internet, really, uh, to cause problems for the West in that way. And that's true, they do do this. But the question I'm trying to answer here is, what intelligence is there actually in this report today, which is based on anything other than a newspaper article or somebody's thesis. What are the facts? We should ask the, um, the Security and Intelligence Committee to show us where the sources of this information are. Who were they? How did they find this out? And what is it based upon? Because at the moment, it seems to be just based on newspaper articles, something that they read in the Times, something that they read in the Herald. Uh, and there's very little, if any, confirmation coming from um, the the committee which is looking at this today. I think if I remember correctly, Stuart Hosey is the chairman of this committee. I may be wrong, I'll check again. But there are Scots, uh, there are SNP members on this security committee who have looked at this. 
uh, report today, and they're saying that the British government failed miserably uh, to check this, to make sure there wasn't any interference in the first place. But now we've got reports that are based, apparently, not only on intelligence uh, gathered in the traditional way, but the so-called open source, reliable, credible open sources um, intelligence from newspapers, magazines and other people's academic work. It, it's bizarre. So just be on your guard today and when you are reading what the so-called Russians have been up to, remember that it's not that long ago that a, a lot of Scottish uh, tweeters were basically being called Russian trolls because of things that they tweeted. That somehow or other, because they agreed with something that the Russians had done or said that somehow they were in the pay of the Kremlin. This is all nonsense and based on nothing other than opinions, hearsay. Anyway, that's it for me today. Just a short uh, program today, uh, because when I read Craig's article today and I listened to what he had to say in that, a lot of things began to make a bit more sense. That the British government often does this, and we know that in times like this, when the whole world order is up in the air and rearranging itself around us, that Russia, China, United States and Europe are all jostling to find a new position in this global situation. China is currently the, the place which is being monstered by the West as being the biggest threat. The Americans love a communist state to oppose. And uh, the Russians are not strong enough to give the Americans a fight these days. And so they've turned their attention to China. And of course, China isn't perfect anyway. China is, of course, um, a totalitarian state. I mean, it's a one-party dictatorship. It dresses itself up nicely and it does business with the rest of the world. And it's relatively civilized, but it rules with an iron fist. And if you step out of line, you're in trouble, as people in Hong Kong have found out. And you'll notice that the Hong Kong rioting and the protests have all died away now because the law has been put in place and they now know that they cannot beat the might of the Chinese state. But pulling things like Huawei out of British infrastructure and threatening the Hinkley Point nuclear power station deal, which is worth billions and billions of dollars of investment to the United Kingdom because they are pissing off the Chinese, is another indication of the paranoia that's being developed by the political classes and around the world at the moment. And I'm hesitant to get dragged into this because all of the political parties at the moment are paranoid and all of the governments of the world seem to be paranoid, especially the Americans are totally paranoid uh, about everything and everyone. And China at the moment is the target. Russia, I think, will well, basically, it, it, it is going to try to annoy people, but it can only do little more than goad us a little bit um, and possibly provoke us to some uh, outrageous tweets or something. But it's not the kind of power it used to be. Despite its nuclear arsenal and its relatively modern weaponry, Russia is not the biggest force in the world that it once was. It's certainly not a threat to the Americans. Anyway, that's it for today, but when you are listening to the radio, watching the television reports, when you hear the words credible open source or open source uh, intelligence, you now know what it means. It just basically means they read it in the paper somewhere, they read it in a magazine, they read it on a newsstand. It's not secret, okay? I will be back again probably tomorrow. Um, I'm doing a bit of work this week, so I feel like I've got back into my rhythm a little bit. As usual, um, you can contact me after the show, and if you have any comments to make or corrections that you want me to make, please let me know. I'll see you all, hopefully, tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.